Hello, this is Thomas with Geon Technologies. And what I have for you in this video are some demos of the Frontend Interfaces 2.0 enabled Edis E310 that we recently released. As you may recall from our blog post, this project came about through a bit of an informal collaboration between Edis Research, Axios Engineering, and us here at Geon to not only integrate Red Hawk 2.0 onto the E310, but to do it in a way that simplifies the process for all of us by incorporating it into an open embedded layer. And then we gave it all back to the community. For the E310 image, an automatically launching Redhawk node is installed along with the usurp UHD device that's found on the Redhawk SDR GitHub repositories. Set the domain and Omni services IP and you're off to the races. Before we move on, here's a shot of the IDE where I've started and connected to the default domain running on my virtual machine. I've already configured the E310's OmniOrb config to point to this domain and modified its IP tables. So once the E310 finishes booting, here we are, two digitizers and two transmitters. And as further proof that this is an FEI device now, we'll use the allocation wizard in the IDE to point the E310 at Wi-Fi and various frequency hoppers in our office. I'm giving it a simple allocation ID for the sake of plotting in a moment, E310 for the win. Like several FEI devices, the interpretation of bandwidth tends to fluctuate from device to device, so here I'm just going to set it to auto. For the sample rate, I chose 15 mega samples per second, which truthfully is a bit much in this configuration right now. You'll see warnings about overflows in the E310's node log, and the port statistics in the IDE will show it hovering at around actually 11 megs. However, now that we've allocated the digitizer, we can plot the data from the port using the allocation ID from before. Here I've just quickly set us up to look at the spectrum. We can occasionally see bursts that look like Wi-Fi as well as some of the frequency hoppers in the area. Now you know we can't leave you without some sort of a teachable moment, right? So how about using the Edis N210 as well as the E310 in a cognitive radio application we've developed as seen from our Angular Red Hawk based web client running from our extended REST Python server. Now we're talking. Here you can see the web client UI developed by Patrick Wolfram from our surveyor application running in my Google Chrome window. I've remote shelled into his system for the Red Hawk IDE domain panel you see to the right so we can monitor the E310 up top and the N210 called usurp node down at the bottom. You'll recall from the blog post that Red Hawk is actually running on the E310 whereas Red Hawk is running remotely for the N210 as shown here in this picture. First, we launch and start the Surveyor waveform, which is going to handle our energy detection capabilities. Then, based off what it can find, it will respond by launching other waveforms to pick apart the spectra and classify it into other signals. For simplicity, this time around, we've removed the other possible classifiers so that it only look for 802.11g Wi-Fi. Next up, we'll allocate the N210 by using explicitly its instantaneous bandwidth of 40 MHz. The center frequency is set to channel 6, where our base station is running, and for the N210, we've picked 16 mega samples per second. Clicking Allocate, we can see in the IDE panel that the N210 is now allocated by the Surveyor app. And bingo, found the base station already. I'm going to clear this log out and deallocate. And it picked up the base station again before I had a chance to deallocate it and categorized it. So I'll go ahead and clear this out again. For the E310, we pick its instantaneous bandwidth to 56 MHz and change the sample rate to 15 mega samples per second. Allocating again, we see the E310 is now allocated to the surveyor over in the IDE panel, and we have already detected the base station and responded appropriately to categorize it as channel 6. Now time for a hat trick. Let's allocate back to the parameters that are particular to the N210, 40 MHz and 16 mega samples. When we hit allocate, the surveyor releases the E310's allocation and goes looking for another receiver that can handle these specs. Bingo! The E310's digitizer frees back up, the N210 gets allocated, and immediately the surveyor finds the Wi-Fi again. Some important takeaways from this are, the surveyor app was never released throughout this. It sat there idling along, waiting to allocate a receiver from the user specs, and then respond to whatever data came from that allocation. Which brings us to point number two. The surveyor waveform has no idea what hardware it's talking to, whether it be the N210, the E310, our FEI file reader, 
whatever. It simply describes an FEI allocation of interest, or in other words, spectral content, and then starts ingesting the data. This is how Redox waveforms, also known as applications, are hardware agnostic. That's it for the demos. Please check out the post, as there's a link to the SD card image for the E310, as well as our GitHub repository for the Meta Redhawk SDR layer. Also on GitHub are the extended REST Python web server, as used in this demo, along with the Angular Redhawk client framework for UI development, and the high-performance FEI file reader, which we didn't demo here. With it, you can simulate an FEI receiver. As always, I'm Thomas with Geon Technologies. Thanks for watching.